another aspect which we can mention is um, a little bit more complicated, but it's a relatively simple idea, and that is people that start working with the now moment um, often um, leave out an important factor because what they'll start to say is things like, well, if everybody lived in the now, then the world would basically be without problems um, because it's people that aren't living in the now that are living in the past, living in the future, creating anxiety, creating all sorts of negative emotions, and they take those negative emotions out on the world, and that's where all the world's problems come from. So if we just all lived in the now, then all of our problems would essentially be taken care of. And what that overlooks is um, this, and that's also very common in the world's mystical traditions. It's just if I can live in the now, all problems are solved. But this is where another important discovery of the West uh, needs to be added to a truly integral or comprehensive picture of my own uh, spiritual practice if I want to actually make practice. And that's the notion of that there aren't just states of consciousness, like being in a state of now awareness, but there are stages of consciousness. There are structures of consciousness. And these develop. States of consciousness generally don't develop, although if they're trained, they can. But states of consciousness are things like waking, dreaming, uh, deep formless sleep, uh, ever-present now awareness. Uh, and those states of consciousness tend to um, be, tend to come and go. Structures of consciousness, on the other hand, tend to develop. They develop in stages. And um, one of the first Westerners to point this out and discover this was Gene Gepser, and he called these stages, which are stages that actually humanity have gone through and stages that individuals go through. Mm -hmm. um, even to this day, everybody born today goes through these stages. And they're archaic, magic, mythic, rational, pluralistic, and integral. And what happens there is if we actually look at these stages of development and we look at the mythic stage, that's the stage of traditional values, of fundamentalists, and uh, the notion that uh, you know Moses really parted the Red Sea, Christ was really born of a biological virgin, and so on. But those are the basis of traditional values. Rational stage is the basis of modern values, modern science, modern scientific research, the modern Western Enlightenment, and so on. Um, pluralism is the basis of postmodern values, and that includes you know, multiculturalism and multicultural sensitivity and relativism and pluralism and so on. And those three stages right there are the basis of culture wars mm -hmm. in our culture. Yeah. It's basically traditional values versus modern values versus postmodern values. And so what's going to happen there is all three of those stages, people can be at all three of those stages and get in touch with the now moment. And they're still going to be coming from those stages. So it's important to recognize that what the world needs is not just having people get in touch with the now moment, but have people develop through these stages. Absolutely, absolutely. So whatever stage a person is at, uh, they are going to, what, they, if they have an experience, including right. the experience of the now moment, they are going to interpret that now moment from the stage that they're at. Exactly. And so you, why don't you describe kind of how each of those three stages would interpret uh, that kind of a, of a now moment uh, transcendent experience? Um, yes, so um, somebody at um, um, the mythic fundamentalist stage would interpret this as an experience of absolute truth given to basically one and only one group of people because the traditional uh, stage of development is very ethnocentric. And so it believes in um, 
God's chosen people, and it believes it tends to be very militaristic and very patriarchal, and somebody having an experience of the now moment at it, and they're at that stage, they're going to experience it as a truth that is given just to a certain set of individuals, and um, a truth that depends upon belief in um, the Bible, for example, or if it happens, if there's a fundamentalist um, experience in in, in um, Islam, then it it's a fundamentalist belief in the Koran, and you have fundamentalist Buddhists and fundamentalist Hindus and so on. And so that's a, a very common and actually um, 70% of the world's population is at these eth- ethnocentric or lower levels of development. At the rational modern stage, somebody experiencing uh, the now moment is going to interpret that as the reality underlying the entire world. They're going to interpret it as a ground of being. They're going to interpret it as something that's um, true for all people, regardless of race, color, sex, or creed. And they're going to interpret it as it being the same for all people, that it's a universal. And this is um, something that um, is um, um, would be very, very strongly believed in. If you get the next stage, the pluralistic stage or the postmodern stage, and somebody has a strong experience of the now moment, then they're going to experience that as being um, truth, but truth for them. And they're going to maintain that other individuals, other sentient beings, could have a different type of experience of this now moment, that this now moment could show up in different forms and in different ways. And it, it's not universal because there are no universals for somebody at the pluralistic stage. So even though they're having this powerful, powerful experience, when they come out of it and interpret it, they're going to interpret it as still being um, um, pluralistic. And so these are um, examples of what happens when people have these experiences, but they will interpret them to the stage they're at. And the important thing is that all of these early stages of development all have one thing in common, and that is they believe that their value structure is the only correct value structure that there is. So the fundamentalist believes that the, um, his or her fundamentalist values are the only ones that are really true, and the modernist believes that modern scientific methods and modern rationality are the only methods that give actual truth, real truth, and others are all wrong. And the postmodernist, the pluralist, believes that even science is no more real than poetry and that they're all um, truths are relative. And so they believe their truth, that all truths are relative, is the only correct truth anywhere in the world. Well, what happens when you get to the next stage, which is called an integral stage and the integrative stage, is that that's the first stage where individuals who are at that stage realize that all of the previous values have some important place. They have some important role to play, that they are fundamentally important and that they exist for um, an important reason and that they're part of um, humanity's development. So the integral stage finds room for all of the previous stages and understands that all of them are necessary in terms of overall growth and development. And so in a sense, the way we would sort of summarize the ideal situation for a person is that they would be um, fully ensconced in the now moment and do so from an integral level. And now that combination is something that would give us a chance for world peace. But having individuals at the pluralistic stage or at the modern stage or at the traditional stage, having those people have pure now experiences is not going to guarantee world peace because all of those values 
are at war with all the others. All of those values still believe that they're the only correct value. Everybody else is wrong. And that will guarantee warfare, even if the person is living from the now moment. So we want to supplement, be in touch with the now moment. But when you interpret it, interpret it from the highest structures, highest stages that are available. And right now, those are called integral. So it's, it's two things, two types of growth that we really want to pay attention to. And one is these sort of vertical growth through these stages of archaic to magic to mythic to rational to pluralistic to integral. And then another kind of growth into the now moment. But doing just one or the other of those leaves out an enormously important part of the human condition and an enormously important part of your own liberation. 